There are a number of methods that can be used to place calculation points into your AGI32 models. In this video, I'll cover the use of the basic two-point grid of calculation points. This is as simple as it gets, but this command with options can be useful in a variety of lighting applications. Points located in this way are not associated with a room or object surface and are suitable for exterior or interior applications. Two-point grids are rectangular grids placed with two opposing clicks. Selecting the command from the Calculations Toolkit, two-point input is the default. We'll just click the button. This opens a dialog where you have control over several variables. Let's look at a few examples. To begin, we'll keep the 10 by 10 default point spacing. We'll leave the center points relative to grid boundaries selected. And we'll leave the light meter set at horizontal meter and grid. This measures horizontal illuminance. Now we'll turn on the grid lines so we can see what we're doing. The grid elevation is set to z equals 0. Exit the dialog by clicking OK and watch the lower left corner of the screen, the command line. This tells you what your next step should be. Select or enter first point of grid. Locate one corner, click, Expand the rectangle to locate the opposite corner. Click. Now we have a grid of calculation points, 10 by 10 on center. And the points are centered within this rectangle that we drew. You can start at any corner when using the horizontal grid and meter option, and the grid will always be aligned with the x-axis. And the light meter will always be measuring horizontal illuminance. Let's right-click to start the command again, and let's try it. This time, we'll go from upper left to lower right. As you can see, the values are aligned with the x-axis just as before. Let's right-click to start the command again. We can locate the grid at some z-coordinate other than 0, say 3 feet. With the horizontal meter and grid selected for light meter, the plane will always be horizontal. We can look in elevation view we can see one plane is located at 3 feet and the other two at 0. Let's start the command again. And this time, let's uncheck the center points box. This way, the values will be aligned with the rectangle that we draw. Notice the values now are aligned on the x-axis and the y-axis with the lower left corner of the first point that we clicked. As a more advanced application, Let's look at some options for light meter aiming, which allow different variations of the two-point grid. When selecting the light meter to be normal to the grid, the light meter faces in a direction normal to the grid, which allows sloping of the grid by entering two different z values. With the meter indicator on, let's start the first point at z equals 0, and the second point at z equal 20. We can now look in isometric view and see the slope of the grid that we just created. Let's look again in elevation, looking to the left. There you can see. Selecting the command again, let's change the second point back to zero. Click OK and notice that we have a little piece of text that says the grid is facing out, F5 to flip. Do you see that? So I've pressed the F5 button, that's actually going to flip the meter orientation. So right now, the meters are facing out. If I press F5 on the keyboard, the meters are facing in. Let's verify that. Look in elevation view, the meters are facing down. So that's one way to get illuminance up in the sky, facing back the other direction. Starting the command again, Let's look at another light meter option. We can fix the orientation and the tilt of the light meter. A fixed light meter allows you to face the light meter at all points in a specific direction. The most common example of this is vertical illuminance points lying in a horizontal grid. You'll want to reference the help topic on this to understand how light meters tilt. It's accessed from the light meter link. Let's take a quick look so you can find it. Click help. Here's the link to light meter, directions on how light meters tilt, and a handy little table for all the axial directions. 
So we see a vertical meter facing west, or in the negative x direction, is orient 0, tilt 90. Let's try that. Orientation 0, tilt 90. Let's change the color of the grid so we can differentiate it from the others that we've actually been using. We can see from the meter indicators that the meter is actually facing to the west. Well, what if we take a luminaire and drop it over here? And then we calculate the points. We have vertical illuminance facing west. But what if we move that luminaire to the other side of the grid? Now calculate. What happens? That's right. No light. Vertical illuminance is directional, and light meters can't see backwards. As a final option, let's go back to the Calculations Toolkit, select the command again. Let's look at a variable meter. We do this by actually selecting the coordinates of a point at which all light meters will face. This is primarily used for television illuminance, security lighting, and sports lighting. We can specify the XYZ coordinate by actually clicking graphically if we like, or we can enter it in the spaces provided. Let's go ahead and do it graphically. The Z coordinate down here in the lower right hand corner is currently 0. What if I put it at 15 feet? And now I'm going to locate my camera location there. There I've got the XYZ, because we have coordinates all over the place while we've been placing all these grids. So now I'm actually ready to go. Now I'm going to place my grid of points. And if we look down here, we can see the meter indicators are all facing to a common point. That's the television camera. So that wraps up our lesson on two-point calculation grids. Be sure to watch the other videos on placing calculation grids. There are a variety of options as some techniques are more suitable to certain applications than others.